Welcome everybody to SJB Podcast. As you know, we are back with another banger. So today I'm not alone, you know that I'm the I'm with the new host, our brother there. Oh yes. Yeah, can you introduce yourself? This is Pepe Nosimelani speaking here. Okay, I'm going to call. I'm going to focus on the key and get into some. I'm going to say boom boom. Let's come and make sense. Greetings to you all. Thank you, our guest. Wow. So many. Ah, it's nice to have seminarians like Simelani. Excited like. about today. And for us today, we don't have like guests like the one we had before. Uh, a very formal man, but today we have like our brothers who had a journey before coming to the seminar. So I would like to give it to them to introduce themselves, also to give insight of what they have studied and what they, yeah, what they have studied actually. Then we'll get back to how did they come to to find their vocations and everything. So I'll start with brother George. Okay, um, good evening everyone. My name is Mteto George Nojegwa from Queenstown. I actually studied analytical chemistry mm. in Cape Peninsula University of Technology in yes. Cape Town. Okay. okay, so my name is Dylan McCallum. Um, I'm from the Archdiocese of Cape Town. I studied nursing uh, at the University of the Western Cape, which is just across the road from okay. his university. We actually studied at the same time between 2014 and okay. 2018. But you didn't know each other? We didn't know each other, we didn't see each other. <laughs> I was just on the one side of campus, so we never saw each other. Yeah, what a coincidence, yes. So thank you, brothers, and welcome to our podcast. I hope you'll enjoy, and we are here to have fun. We are not here to be serious about analytical chemistry <laughs> and nursing and stuff. So I'll give it to brothers Melani to just introduce the topic of today and to maybe impose some of the questions for today. So, that is. Mm. so basically today, um, we have invited our brothers to this podcast, you know, sort of to get how it feels, I mean, to transition from a life where you are just continuing with your career and, you know, answering a, a call, you know, that is sometimes uh, maybe labeled as peculiar to the, to the society. So generally, I, I, I would like to start maybe by asking uh, about their vocation uh, stories, each of them. Let's start with you, maybe, Dylan. Oh, wow, I think the story has been exhausted quite a lot of times. Um, I remember I was grade nine and mm. I was serving like a normal teenager, Catholic teenager you were serving. And we had a young priest coming to our parish, young guy. And I just looked and I was like, I want to be like him one day. And I was grade nine, I was 14 at the time. You know, when you're a teenager, everything looks fun. And I went to him and I was like, I want to become a priest. And he asked me simply, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm 14. He's like, whoa, no, 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 no. That's too young. Um, go and study, go live your life, travel, um, go to a job. And of course, my parents were immensely happy at that. And then <clears> your 14-year-old child says, I want to become a priest. They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Go in, have a career basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went through high school normally. I was a youth leader, I was an altar server, and I continued to discern God's call in my life. Um, and then came the big decision of what to study in varsity. Um, so I applied at Stellenbosch University for a degree in international relations, and then I applied for nursing at the University of the Western Cape. Two very different things. And um, I took the University of the Western Cape because um, I wanted to help people. I always wanted to help people. I enjoyed it. And a lot of people said it would suit me. So because people said it would suit me, I went and I studied nursing. But even on campus, I discerned God's call in my life. Um, it got a bit more louder, got a bit more apparent. Um, still very much involved in the parish life. Uh, even working. Working brought in its own new challenges. Um, because you don't have the time that you had at varsity. Varsity, you have a sense of more freedom mm -hmm. in varsity. Um, working, you don't, especially when you work a shift as a nursing sister. Mm -hmm. You work about 12 hours, 44 hours a week. So you work 44 hours a week and you try to figure out where you can have that quiet moments to discern God's call. I think I remember working night shift and driving to discernment classes on a Saturday morning and sitting there absolutely tired from night shift, still in the sermon classes. Luckily, there was good coffee at the sermon classes. <laughs> it was very good coffee. Um, and I just decided one day after work, enough is enough. 
I think it's time to make the decision. Um, I'll never forget, it was a very windy day in Cape Town. I walked out of protest care and I just said, I'm going to make a decision. I applied for a private job at a private hospital and I applied for the seminary at the same time. And the private hospital got back quicker. And then stayed there for about three months at a private hospital working. Uh -huh. And just one day got the message, you've been accepted, congratulations. After a long process of applications, interviews, everything. Got the message, you've been accepted. It was the first time I think I wrote my resignation letter. I was very really clear in my resignation letter. I was like, um, at the end, I'm going to start to become a Catholic priest, full stop. And when I submitted the letter, my manager just read it. And when it came to that part, I'm going to start to become a Catholic priest. She's like, okay, yeah. It suits you. Okay. Um, thank you for telling us. Um, so, yeah, shot. Thanks. And then afterwards, you still work. You know, when you resign, you still have to be at work. So it's awkward now. Because yeah, everyone's like, so. oh, you resigned. Okay. Yeah, we'll miss you. Those that never liked you at work. <laughs> they will miss you. So, yeah, there are people like that. It, it happens. It happens. Um, we'll miss you. Da -da -da -da. Um, I didn't get a farewell party. I don't think they missed me that much that I didn't get a farewell party. But I Why does it seem like you're still bitter? No, it's not bitter. It's not bitter at all. I, I just, I was surprised. There was no farewell. Like, you know, people used to get like platters and things. I just got a very good handshake and a voucher to the local coffee shop that was there. And then came to the seminary. I'm still discerning God's call. But I think there's a great contentment now in me. Unlike before I joined the seminary. I'm very content now where I am. And I must say I'm enjoying seminary life. So in a nutshell, that's 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 my vocation story. Mm. What an inspiring story. So mm. I, 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 let's let's hear also maybe from Brother George. Yeah. When's the guy about? Um mine is not as glamorous as as, as Dylan's. Um I <laughs> unfortunately it's not. Um I would say I discovered the call when I was during my second year. Of tertiary and that's when i realized that uh yeah i'm doing chemistry i'm, I'm enjoying it but there's something missing mm -hmm. so i then began start i began writing um, a letter to the then bishop of queenstown bishop Dabulam Pago, who's now the archbishop of pretoria and he mm -hmm. advised me and said please finish your qualification mm -hmm. discern the call properly you know study work and then then we'll come back and talk, mm -hmm. of which it was quite fair, you know, mm -hmm. that at least I had some experience of working and some experience of, 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 of studying. Mm -hmm. So I continued studying until I finished um, 2017, and then I started working at FFS Refiners as a quality assurer in the laboratory. Um, it, was, it, was the, it was then that the, the, the call or the vocation came to life. I was working with people of different ethnicity, people of different religions. Just for the benefit of, of, of our viewer there, what really happens in this uh, industry of what you call quality assurer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, I start, as I said, I studied analytical chemistry. So my mm -hmm. job was basically chemical analysis okay. in the laboratory. A product comes through, I analyze it to see if it meets the spec of the customer who's buying the product. So I was working in a petroleum company that sold oil. Mm -hmm. So then I would test the oil to see if it meets the spec that the customer wants. So I was a quality assurer. If we're receiving raw oil from uh, Petro SA or Chevron, mm -hmm. I would test that oil to see whether is there any water in it. Does it meet the specifications in terms of density and all those things. Mm -hmm. So that is what I basically did. In the, in the laboratory. So then working at FFS then um, brought the vocation to life. I encountered, <clears throat> sorry, I encountered lively people. I encountered people who were full of life. Mm. Uh, we know when you're working with, with people of different ages, they teach you something about yourself. Mm. Everyone you meet teaches you something about yourself. So 2018, just as I was finishing up my internship year, mm. I was offered a, a contract as a stock controller mm -hmm. of the company. This is now a C1 grade uh, kind of a, a job, a two-digit job. Mm -hmm. I then sat down and said to myself, 
I can work and have all the money, <laughs> but still no there is something missing. I'm not mm -hmm. fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So then I, I, I told my, my, my laboratory manager, Mr. JJ, that ah, this is not it. I want to pursue the vocation to the priesthood. I told, I remember I told telling the factory manager, because he's the one who called me and said, I see a lot of CVs, but I don't see your CV. And this job is basically yours. Mm. I said, ah, ah, I want to pursue something greater. I want to pursue uh, the vocation to priesthood. And he said something profound to me. He said, it's quite amazing that a, a young man like yourself is fine tuning on a radio, a knob, mm. cutting out all frequencies just to listen to one, one yeah. frequency. And he said, that for me is profound. For someone your age, I was 23 years old mm. by that time. I, 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 I then said, I can work, but no. Mm. He then said, you have all the blessings, go and pursue uh, this vocation and see where it takes you. So I started the last year. Mm. was there you know on a campus level you know you have the freshers bash you have mm. colleagues that you work with um, going into the world you meet multiple people various people mm. from various backgrounds mm. but staying with them is a completely different mm. thing yeah. As Milan and Boris, I think uh, one thing that people don't understand is that you know uh, vocation is not or when you feel like you have a calling, it's not about seeing God or seeing angels. Call me don't you? <laughs> or what? But it's something that that is deep inside, you know. Not finding fulfillment into other things, you know, like mm -hmm. knowing that yes, I'm doing this thing, but there's this particular thing that I want, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that that's what people must understand that they, you don't have to see um, an angel falling mm -hmm. down coming to you or having mm -hmm. dreams celebrating mass or something you know <laughs> so but uh, my question is you know uh it's i can understand that i think you guys were were getting a lot of money when you're working right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that in the in this life of priesthood there's not much of a there's no salary actually you don't call it a salary it's yeah. just remuneration, you know, something that yeah. you say, you know, go and take care of yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how did you like come to conclusion of saying, you know what, I'm leaving this kind of money just to, to be here. I know it's not about money, it's all about the joy that you find inside. <laughs> but was it difficult to leave that, that amount that you were getting, you know? You know, at, at, at first it was very difficult, I don't want to lie. Mm -hmm. Because when I when I left work and I joined the seminary in 2019, my classmates started buying cars. Mm -hmm. yeah. My classmates started buying apartments. My mm -hmm. classmates were further in their studies. And myself, I was in a chapel. <laughs> I remember once, one of my, my, my classmates was just bought a new polo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were posting on, on Facebook and on WhatsApp mm -hmm. that, oh, come, I bought a new, my new baby. And I remember I went down to the chapel. I was still in Cape Town. I went down to the chapel and I just stood at the back. I said, Tip, <laughs> don't you play with me. I'm in it for real. And I mean business. Yeah. So it's not about the money, mm. but it's about the fulfillment that I found in this vocation. Mm. The joy I found in this vocation. There was a sense of completeness that came mm. with this vocation. Mm. I might have worked, I might have, you know, um, started making a name for myself out there mm. in the chemistry world, but the joy and the fulfillment and the completeness that comes with this vocation mm. is undescribable. Mm. Mm. And for you, Father Dylan, I think George beautifully summed it up. I mean, mm. um, at the hospital I was working at, the last hospital I was working at, they 
also I was also up for a promotion. Mm -hmm. And they always tell you these things when you resign or when you leave, <laughs> and they tell you, no, you are up for this position, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You wonder if it was actually true <laughs> in the it's, first place. But I think it's a sacrifice, you know. It like is, God is putting you in that moment of just course, to, yeah, to see much. how much he can sacrifice for you. Of course. It's a great sacrifice. And I think it's, it's a sacrifice that you don't take really easy. You know, you weigh the options when, when you are applying to the seminary. And like George, my, my peers as well, okay, we had COVID in my year when we were mm. in the seminary. Mm. So I was getting job offers in my year in Cape Town. I had mm. about three job offers. One was as a manager at a field hospital. Mm. And I simply said, I don't know what to do. Do I want this post? Do I leave the seminary? I remember going to each of the priests in Cape Town presenting them with this. And I was like, what do I do? One would say, pray about it. The other one would say, you know, if you were in the religious life, it would have been easier for you to just go and come back. But I think the one answer I got was be careful of the temptation. Mm -hmm. Look, mm -hmm. you are on a journey and the temptation will always be there for something better. Yeah. And I think having a salary of double digits is that great big yes. temptation that yeah. you would really like to have, especially when you see in your peers um, buying cars, buying flats, mm -hmm. having weddings on these wine farms that are, when you look at the budget, it's 400k just to book the venue. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, I mean, that's vacations, <laughs> vacations as well, <laughs> <laughs> to the Netherlands, you can or go. Okay. Yes, you can still take it, but you know, it's, it's a completely on a different tight budget. On a very <laughs> tight budget. On a very tight budget. So, you know, but like you said, it's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I think George summed it up so beautifully with the word fulfillment. You can have all the money, you can have all the cars, you can have a beautiful house, you can have that wonderful trip to Switzerland, but it can be completely devoid, it can be empty mm. if you're not enjoying what you're doing. And I think coming to the seminary, discerning that goal, making that decision, it brings a great contentment and fulfillment in my life personally. I think George also, he said it so beautifully, so it's that fulfillment and that is the greatest reward. I don't think there's a pay slip out there that, mm. that can cover that, that, that or that can match that. Mm. Mm. Oh, 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 I mean, I mean that's good. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing about you know the finances and and all those things. But now I'm, 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 I'm also interested in I mean the dynamic of your lives. Okay, when you are home, you can you know take your own decisions. You know you are working. Even the parents mm. they trust you not so ever. Now coming from that life and joining a communal life learning different people, characters, and whatsoever. <laughs> was it something difficult for you? Was it something easy for you? Was it something nourishing for the vocation or sometimes demotivating? Like I, I just want to get that from you. One thing that, you know, Varsity taught me is self-discipline, self-control. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it taught me not to want to to, to bring out to bring out my personality onto others mm -hmm. um, it taught me a lot of things and you know I, I stayed in a in a boys residence male residence rather mm -hmm. so I, I, I I've, I've met all personalities that you can find under the sun nothing is new mm -hmm. so coming to join Vianney to 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 or maybe joining you know mm -hmm. formation to, to to stay in a, in a, in a communal setting sure. was not that difficult because I'm used to most personalities. Especially I'm used place. to people who would wake up and not greet you in the morning. It's okay. Mm -hmm. you know, it's part of life. They woke up on the wrong side of bed. It's okay. But it's not about that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like there are people who are not the morning person. You know, they feel like you know in the morning you have to get the sense of yourself. It has to feel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. That is true. But then you find people who any hours of the morning they are talking. Well, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> what are they talking you? about? For me, <laughs> where do you find all these rumors to talk about? So exactly. early in the morning, you understand? <laughs> So all these different personalities, yeah. I, 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 I managed to, to, you know, to handle all of them. Oh, yeah. I managed to, to integrate you know, myself into the communal mm -hmm. um, aspect of this kind of a vocation that we have. Mm -hmm. And it all comes from the experience, experience that I've had mm -hmm. at Varsity. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh. Kidding. Mm -hmm. I had the exact opposite of what George had. So UWC was about 15 minutes mm -hmm. away. And I think I had my first year, yeah, 2014, I passed out with my driver's license. Mm. Oh, yeah. So I started driving to campus, 
um, the culture shock was there, you know, on a campus level. You know, you have the freshers bash, you have mm -hmm. colleagues that you work with. Um, going into the ward, you meet multiple people, various people mm -hmm. from various backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But staying within is a completely different mm -hmm. thing. Because yeah. I met my people on campus. When I go home at four, they are no longer there. Oh, yeah. At mm -hmm. the hospital, the same. When my shift finished at seven, they are no longer there. Oh, yeah. I think in my case, and you were my classmate at that time, we had COVID. So yeah. Cape Town went into full, full <laughs> lockdown for a solid eight months. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Living with people for eight months. And I remember some days you were so frustrated because you wanted your own space. I stayed in New Corridor. <laughs> so New Corridor is like the hotel of France Xavier's. It's nice big oh. rooms, quiet. <laughs> it's a very nice corridor. It's a, you stay in New Corridor. You see. Many right. things we have in common. Yeah. Luke Corridor is the hotel. You say you have the benefits experience. and then they're not prepared. Luke Corridor you for you. You prepared Luke Corridor for us. Yeah. And it was brilliant. <laughs> it's a brilliant place. And I think the eight months really helped me. Yeah. You know, I, I got a new name. I got a new identity, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, and I think that eight months okay. really showed me. Yeah. It's the story for another day. <laughs> it's a story. <laughs> actually, 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 for the benefit of the day, was, <laughs> For the benefit of the viewers, I'm going to black me yeah. using them. <laughs> the name, right? You don't know. So my, my Zulu name is Sandile. Oh. Uh, he knows it very well. It's Sandile. And my surname is Nglobu. So I have a Zulu name so and... Just surname. one clan name? Kachin. Oh. <laughs> so I have a full <laughs> Zulu name, surname. <laughs> this happened in the, in the eight months I was there. <laughs> and um, it really it did help. You know, it helped. I felt included. Um, of course, there were days where you felt lonely. It was very challenging. You felt alone among the people. I'm sure you felt that in, in residence as well. You wanted your own space, of course. your own shower and everything. But now, <laughs> after eight months, you've gotten used to it. I've, I've gotten used to it. I think when I go home and my brother leaves the wet towel on the floor, you're like, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Or when the food, you look at the food and it's not as appetizing <laughs> as you <laughs> smelt it. It's like, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, mommy, if you're watching this video, but it's, fine. <laughs> um, it's okay, it's fine. So I think that that eight months with you guys, it really, it was quite a big shock, but it's good. You know, there's a saying that you should throw a child in the pool of and course. teach him how to swim. It's a very dangerous statement to make, but I think that's what COVID did. And I, I learned how to swim and it helped greatly when I came into John Vianney. I always say my goal one day is to close a Zulu hymnal or Tosa hymnal or Suta hymnal and, and just sing, sing the words yeah, off wow. by heart. And I think it's wow. it's going well so far. I, I hope so. Don't stand next to me when I, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I just say the words wrong. But just bear with me after, after John B. And hopefully we'll reach that stage. So yes, it was a lovely, lovely. The culture shock was there, you know, on a campus there. You know, we had professional Spanish, we had colleagues that we worked for, and we got into the world multiple people, various people, various people, various people, various people, various people. It was difficult. Um, I, I remember one point we she even said, if you go to the seminar, you just know you're dead to me. I go get good experience. Yes. Yeah. As for me, I think I had a question of the, in terms of uh, your family. You know, when you are waiting, you know, I, I've been, I think uh, <laughs> this is, this topic is quite uh, familiar with me actually, you know, mm. because I was waiting also. And you know, when you are waiting at home, they treat you different. Mm. It's like you can even make some decisions, mm. you know. Even the uncles at home can, you know, come respect. to you and, you know, respect, give that respect. Yeah. And now that you, you were supportive to the family, I think you were supportive, you are giving yes. something to the family yeah, now. And then you coming here, there's nothing that you can offer. So how does their family feel, like, about that, you know? <laughs> <Good Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll go first. Yeah, you yeah. take this um, Luckily for me, I'm the last one at home. Mm. Yeah. Um, my sister is married in Cape Town. My brother is staying in Queenstown and working in Queenstown. My sister is also working. So my mother is retired. She's a retired nurse. Mm. From 2014, she retired. Mm. So she's enjoying her pension now. plus minus 38 years of public service. Mm. Mm. So she's enjoying her money. 
However, when I started working, it, it, it things changed, okay. as you've just said. You know, mm. we, you are you are put on a, on a pedestal of some sort. You are you are earning money. You are working. You 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 earn mm. some form of respect. Mm. I stopped working in twenty eighteen June. I went mm. back home to stay with my mother in Queenstown. It was not easy. <laughs> we have to beg now. Because now I move from, <laughs> oh, I like that, to, mommy, can I please have yeah. some something? <laughs> it, 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 it built, you know, into conflict mm. at some stage. Mm. Because now here I am, 23-year-old, who has just graduated, mm. who, has, uh, who, has, who had rejected a job offer. Mm who is now just sitting at home, discerning the vocation, of course. But now it becomes a financial burden to, to my mother. Mm. So it, 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 it was a problem at, at first. It, it, it led to, to conflict. You know, I, I remember my, my mother would always remind me whenever I asked for money, she'd be like, but you rejected a job offer. <laughs> for what? <laughs> And, and truly, that time she was, she was really addressing, you know, the reality at hand. For what? Because I was just sitting at home discerning mm. for six months. That mm. is this truly what I want to do or not? So it, it, it brought about conflict in the house. You know, things were not, were not so nice mm. anymore. But then when I joined the seminary, then um, the, 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 the mood and the atmosphere changed a bit in the mm. house. But I want to understand, did your mom and, uh, understand when you said you want to go to Oh, seminary? that. When I, when, I, when I told her at first in 2016 that I want to go to the seminary, I, I, I experienced silence mm -hmm. for a few minutes. And then I said, oh boy, that did not go down well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then my mother surprised me and said, my child, I had expected that after matric, you mm -hmm. would want to go to the seminary. I've been waiting for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now you surprised me when you went to varsity mm -hmm. and started studying. I then told myself that, you know, maybe this thing has, has, has gone away. Mm -hmm. But now, why is it coming back now? Mm -hmm. After I have spent so much money yeah. educating you. <laughs> so it was always, it, uh, at first it was not nice. I don't want to lie. It was tough. Mm -hmm. It was difficult. Um, I, I remember one point we she even said, if you go to the seminary, just know you're dead to me. I go. It got to that point. Yeah. That's how hectic yeah. it was. But now, when I reflect in the parish, my mother moved from wherever she was sitting to the front pew. What is it? And she cries. Mm -hmm. The first person who supports me in my family, my number one supporter, in the family now is my mother. Mm -hmm. I think because now she has seen that it, it, it's not it's not just a feeling, but something that you it's something that I, I long, something that I desire, mm -hmm. something that I, I took time and I discerned thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So now she is supportive. At first it was difficult. I mean from any black family, mm -hmm. you yeah. start working and then you you, you quit work mm -hmm. to come to the seminary and say you want to be a priest. <laughs> Meaning you, you're moving from working hard mm -hmm. to earn your money, to earn a living, mm -hmm. to becoming a professional beggar. Yes. Yes. Sorry to put it that <laughs> way, but that's, that's the truth. You, know, you, you leave your work to become a professional beggar. Mm -hmm. in, in any parent's mind, that's, 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 that's not mm -hmm. normal. Yeah. Yeah. There's they, some, you know, it, 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 it's absurd, as if you just put it. Mm. But then as time went on, as I continued in this journey, I mean, I'm doing my second year of theology now. Mm. So she, I, I, th I think she, she sees that, you know, my, my son is, is, this is real. Serious mm. about this is, she, he is serious about it, you know. Mm. It's not just a fling that, that will go away over, over time. But now my son is serious. So then that change of heart came about. Now mm -hmm. she's my oh. number one supporter. She calls and asks, what do you need? How are things? Mm -hmm. Where are you in formation? Mm -hmm. In your second year, what's expected? What's going to happen? When are you finishing? What's expected of us from, from the family? Yeah. 
you know, so all those things. Now she's supporting her first class town. So, um, you know, uh, I, 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 I'm just in love with my viewers today. I want to make everything for them. <laughs> uh, for a person who's sitting at home who maybe doesn't know what Theology 2 is, maybe if you just explain the process from <laughs> Cape Town, maybe to give them a sense how close you are, maybe to, you know, the promised land. <laughs> okay. Um, formation happens in, 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 in three stages, or four stages. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but we, we start with orientation. Yes. Sem okay, my journey started at orientation, orientation seminar. Yes. I know for other brothers it's different. They started PE at Port Elizabeth. Some and will start in, in St. Ambrose in the Archdiocese of Devon. Myself, I started at the orientation seminary. Mm. Uh, Bishop Dabula just sent me straight to Cape Town. I started my orientation year in Cape Town. And then afterwards, I started then the discernment uh, stage of formation, mm -hmm. which is philosophy. Mm -hmm. I then started philosophy from 2020 until 2022 here at John Vianney. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated last year. Mm -hmm. So now I am in the configuration stage, mm -hmm. which is four years of theology. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my second year now of theology. Mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah, yeah, soon. Soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And very soon, yeah, yeah. I will get there. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, for my question to Father to, uh, Dylan, you know, it's, uh, to become a priest is a cultural shock for me. Oh. I think they could go to Father mm -hmm. to George because for him, I think, you know, Kosa people are very strict when it comes to culture, but also of you, are, you have your own culture. <laughs> And you know, being in Africans, uh, are you African? Well, it depends on who you ask. I say yes. <laughs> I, I, say yes. I say yes. Colored people, they are only found in South Africa. I don't go to Europe and say I'm colored. I might be accused of racism. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, being a, a Buddhist is a, is a cultural shock, you know, because you, what is expected of us as men in the, in the culture is to have children, to have a wife, and you know. To keep the same name going. So, how did your, especially your father? Uh -huh. I think your father is the, is well, is the one who's more. Fathers are more keen on this. You know, how did your father take the fact that you wanted to come to the seminar? I, I remember I had this discussion with him. So the best part of having a paycheck is that you can pay for lunch. Yeah. So it was his just birthday. to manipulate, just to manipulate the whole situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a new steakhouse that opened close to us. Um, and it was his birthday. Mm -hmm. So I took him out for my mom, my twin brother, and I and my dad, we went out for, for Sunday lunch. And then my mom knew already mm -hmm. that I'm discerned. And she knew already that I'm going to the seminary, but the big man himself did not know. Mm -hmm. So now at lunch, I'm like, oh, this is, this is a very nice meal. Um, you might not have this next year with me. I might be in the seminary. Jesus at the last supper. <laughs> and he looks at me and he's like, uh -huh, what a funny joke. And then I look at my mom last and I now expect my mom to like, you know, explain the situation. And my mom's like, mm -hmm. so I'm like, no, daddy, I, I applied for the seminary. It's like, the what? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, the seminary. And it's like, why? So I'm like, no, I, I, I want to become a priest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but you studied. Mm. You you have a career. You have a. What about my surname? What about my son? That's the first thing that came up. Yeah. I have two brothers, mind you. So the surname was secured. Mm. Um, but what about my surname? What about the legacy? <laughs> what legacy? I don't know. But what about this? What about that? And we finished the meal. Very cordially, it was fine. He left it. Mm. Two days later, he came to me. And he calls me to the kitchen. And he's like, you know what? Your mother and I, we raised you very well in, in the church. And, you know, I think we, we knew this would mm -hmm. come. And, um, you know, if you need anything, we, we're here to support you. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, it's your decision. You're an adult. That was fine. And then for the last three months of that year, he would rope in my siblings. And I would try and persuade him to stay in nursing. Try and listen to this, try and listen to that. <laughs> Until we went to the parish when it was official, like it became official, official. My parish priest at the time, Father Michael Van Yerden, who's an excellent, excellent man, 
said, okay, the announcement is among the clergy in the diocese now. Bring your family so we can make the announcement to the parish. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. And your father was there. He was there. He had to be there because my mm. mother just shot him the look across the table and was like, you don't have a choice. Let's go. Mm. And as Father Michael made the announcement at the end of Mass, he told my parents, Edward and Anita, thank you so much for giving your son mm. to this church. Um, you have no idea what blessing this is, not just for the parish, mm. but for the Archdiocese and for the Universal mm. Church. Um, and after that, my parents were very content. They were very fine. On a cultural level, it was very difficult to explain to them what a diocesan priest is. Mm. Because... Most colors grew up with the Franciscans or the Capuchins. Mm -hmm. So they wear the brown. Mm -hmm. So when I told my aunt, no, I'm becoming a priest, so you're going to wear the brown. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, no, 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 no. No, I'm going to, I can wear casual clothes, I can wear a cassock, um, I can wear a clerical shirt, God willing, one day. Mm -hmm. And they're like, so you're not going to wear the brown. No, no, no brown, no brown at all. Mm -hmm. Because they're so used to when you hear, yeah, my son is becoming a priest. <coughs> they take the brown among the colors. It's like no, he's taking the brown. Is is going to become, you know, my cousins. I remember rocking up one day for an event. Uh, I had a funeral the morning, and I didn't have time to change for the event. So I just quickly took off my cassock, pushed this collar at the back of my clerical shirt, and just walked into my aunt's house. Mm. And they looked at me, and they're like, "Where's this shirt from? Is it from Singapore? Is <laughs> it from <laughs> travel? Because apparently Singaporeans wear this type of shirt." Oh. And when I just took the collar out. And they're like, oh, it's that type of shirt. And they're like, can we, can, we, can, we, can we see how you look like in it? Mm. So I had to put the collar on. And my aunt just walked in with food. And she's like, looked at me. She's like, oh, are you going to pray over the food? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need to pray over the food? So culture was quite, quite a big shock. Um, I come from a very mixed family. Mm. Um, I had Muslim family. Mm. So, and they were immensely mm. supportive. They were immensely supportive about it. So they also thought when I said, I'm becoming a priest. They were like, oh, so brown. <laughs> so it was very difficult to explain to them. It is still yeah, is. Well, I'm a diocesan. I'm a diocesan student. Um, I can wear casual clothes. I can wear cassock. I can wear clerical shirt. So culturally, it, it's quite fun to see still the difference. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. But my father is now one of my biggest supporters as well. I called him now the other day for canon law. Mm -hmm. He never did canon law. He studied law, but he never did canon law. So when I called him and I was struggling with it, he could easily explain the canon to me without any experience of canon law. Mm. Like, no, law is easy. You're making it complicated. Read me one of the canons. And as I read it, he'd be like, yeah, it's saying this and that. Read me another one. I was like, I don't have time for this. I need to finish my study. I love you, Jimmy. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, God has been there, brother. So we, we can we can tell. I mean, uh, there is a testimony that can be told, you know, to to the world. I mean, everything maybe at this point and moment might be booming and going well uh, in your vocations, but you have just laid the truth to us now that it was not always easy, especially in the decision making part. Now, as we are sitting here, you know, having this conversation. There is somebody at home who may also feel, you know, this, this vocation or this call of God. You know, maybe the, the parents are the one who don't, you know, approve of the child having, mm. you know, the call. Or maybe, you know, the child is being rejected, maybe in, 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 in other places. And how do you convince that person that, you know, sometimes rejection is not always rejection raw as it is, but maybe... It's redirection in life. What, what do we say to those people? What, what verse, you know, since now we have become people of God, what, what <laughs> verse comes into your mind that sort of encourages you? You know, yeah. Thank you, Heaven. Yes, we do. Um, so, uh, one of the verses that always stand out for me, yeah. um, there's actually two. It's, I think it's Matthew 6, verse 34. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has its own worries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Focus on today. Um, you need to be aware of today. You need to live in the now. Um, it's very important to remember that. But I think one of the most important 
Bible verses is John 16, verse 33, for me personally. Um, it's Jesus Christ telling his apostles as he sends them out to mission. He's telling them, do not fear, do not be stressed. Um, you will face many tribulations in this world, but have faith, I have overcome the world. And I think as, as people that are discerning the priesthood of Christ, trying to model after Christ, you know, that, that sticks with you. You know, if he could overcome the world, if the apostles could overcome, overcome the world, I can overcome the world. Why? Because I am a follower of Jesus Christ. So to anyone that's discerning the vocation and having friends, having parents, say, no, don't do it, don't do this, don't do that, pray about it. Simply pray about it. Offer it to God. Offer it to the Lord. And say, look, this is the situation I'm dealing with. They don't want me to become a priest. Um, I'm giving it to you. And that's all you say. I'm giving it to you. Because it is you that has called me. It is you that will support me. And it is you that will reach me to that goal or to that end. So I think it's very important for anyone at home that is discerning that call. To remember that it is not you that called yourself. You're not saying at home, I want to become a priest. But rather it is God that is saying, I want you to become my priest. And I think you need to, when you face that rejection, because it's among the peers as well. Your mm, peer group, surprisingly, they will look at you as if you are mad. Mm -hmm. But with time and with prayer, you will find that, that it's your peer group that kind of become your supporters. Um, they push you on in your vocation. They put you on in formation. When you're having a bad day, um, you call a friend and they will be there for you. So mm -hmm. that challenges that you're facing in the discernment, that rejection, as you mentioned, it will pass. Mm -hmm. It will pass if you offer it to the Lord and you say, this is the problem I'm facing with. Mm -hmm. And it won't pass immediately. I'm not mm -hmm. saying tonight to pray about it, tomorrow it will happen. Yes. It's a gradual process. The sermon is a gradual process. And I think that's very important to remember to mm -hmm. anyone that is discerning God's call. It's gradual. It's not something, we didn't wake up on, a, on, on a morning like, mm -hmm. right, I'm applying to the seminary. Mm -hmm. It's a gradual <coughs> process. Mm -hmm. And that's the best part of it. You take your time, relax, it's fine. A piece of art doesn't happen overnight unless you, and God is the ultimate artist anyways. So a piece of art doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to mold and to think and how you're going to paint the canvas. That is your vocation. Mm -hmm. So take your time at home, please. Take your time to discern God's call. That's testify, right. George. Testify. Give the airmen <laughs> over to me. <laughs> you know, from, from my side, I would, I, would, I would use Revelations 3, verse 20. Mm. Behold, I am standing knocking. Oh, yes. Yes. If anyone hears my voice. Mm. It, 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 it's, more, it's more of, you know, that young person, wherever they are, mm. mastering elimination of noise. Mm. No to be able to fine tune, you know, the correct frequency, mm. the correct voice, and sticking with that voice. Mm. You know, the, the, the family will make noise and mm. say, but who will take care of, of us mm. when, when, when you're in the seminary? Mm. That is just the noise that one needs to eliminate in order to pay attention to the knock of Jesus. You know, one thing I love about God is that he does not force himself on us. Mm -hmm. He says, behold, I am standing, knocking. I'm not opening the door, but I'm giving you the liberty to open the door so that I can enter and take over your life in order for you then to enjoy the benefits that I will come with as the Lord. So it's more of those young people who are at home, as Dren has just said, to descend, 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 descend. Pray about all that is happening. Pray. Bring all those feelings and all those emotions. Bring all those conflicts to the hands of God. The one who is standing at the door knocking and saying, I want you to be a religious sister. I want you to be a priest one day. So it's, it's, it's a matter of them um, mastering, eliminating all those noise in order to be clear and sure of the voice and the knock of God. Mm -hmm. in their hearts but talking about advising people you know at home especially people have like who think they have mm -hmm. a vocation and they think that they are called mm -hmm. do you think uh, it's advisable for people to go to varsity first to 
the, the experience of life before coming to the seminary. Because I think uh, you being in the seminary, you have experienced a lot of, like you said, you experience a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. People from uh, varsity coming to the seminary and people from straight from Madrid coming to the yes. seminary, you know. So what's your advice to the people who are watching? Maybe they are working. Some of them are working, some of them are at university, some of them are doing Madrid or in secondary mm -hmm. school. You know, you know, brother, that, that, that one is quite tricky because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going to varsity might work for me. Mm -hmm. yes. And coming straight from a trick might work for the next person. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it all boils down to you surrendering your will and your life to, the, to God mm -hmm. and saying, God, direct my life the way. You know, because if, 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 if God takes you straight from a trick to the seminary, that's, that's how he wants it to be. Mm -hmm. And if God takes you from matric to varsity to a workplace, it's because he wants to teach you something, yes. teach you skills, teach you something about yourself that you will need yes. in the journey ahead. Yes. I mean, some, some, some come from, from matric straight to the seminary and they're doing well in the seminary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some come from varsity to the seminary and you look and say, boy, <laughs> and some from varsity to the seminary and they are doing well mm. because you know in, 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 in each and every person's vocation story uh, God has a certain way of doing things yes. and we all run different races mm. yes. and we all are running on different lanes now my lane might be longer than yours mm. Mm. I don't know when God wants me to be a priest. I might be counting, to, I'm left with two years, but God still has five years in store before mm -hmm. I <laughs> get ordained, you yeah. understand? So it's a matter of just allowing the will of God to prevail, the will of God to take place mm -hmm. in your life and surrender everything to God. If God wants me to take a break next year, who am I to stand before him? He is the one who called me after all. Mm -hmm. I do not call myself. So it's a matter of surrendering everything then to, to, to the hands of God. And then uh, I really, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one to say, mm. if you go to varsity, you stand a better chance of doing a good <laughs> seminary. Mm. You might go to varsity and, and not make it. You might come from a trick and make it. Mm. So it, it's, it's a really trick. It, it all lies in the hands of God. Mm. 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 You could do that. I, I think, thank you, thank you. That's a very good point that George made now is... is our vocations are all different. Mm. Even the call that God is calling you to is very, very different. Whether you're matric, varsity, working, mm -hmm. you know, there's, it's very, very different in that aspect. And I think George summed it up so beautifully. There's a reason things happen. Mm -hmm. If God wants you after matric, if God feels, if you feel that God is calling you after matric, then so be it. After varsity, so be it. After the workplace, so be it. Mm -hmm. I think, once again, give it to God. God will guide you. And listen listen have moments of silence make time for that silence whether you have to go on a walk by yourself sit silence. in the car even if you have to just close your bedroom door light a candle say the rosary but make time for silence so you can listen because it's not an easy decision to make it's a very difficult decision to make mm -hmm. um, once again the decision should be made just then and there do it regularly go for walks regularly by yourself Speak to people, speak to priests, speak to religious sisters, speak to brother seminarians. Say, I am discerning a call to the vocation. Hear what they have to say about it, whether you're in matric, varsity, or working. Listen to what people, because that's what we did. I mean, many of us have done that. We went to priests and religious sisters and were like, I want to do this, I want to do that. Cape Town, we were very fortunate. We had discernment classes. And it is compulsory if you are discerning the vocation to attend those classes. Mm -hmm. You have to go, and that is where you gauge. You gauge nicely with the priest, you gauge nicely with the religious sisters. And then they also see, you know, if you want to stay in the workplace, stay a bit longer, give it another year. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to go right now, let's get the paperwork in order. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very good parish priest, like I mentioned as well. Um, he went straight from the trick into the seminary, and he's a wonderful man, he's an excellent priest. And he's the one that was saying to me, no, finish your degree first, mm -hmm. finish your degree first. Mm -hmm. And when I finished my degree, I had to do compulsory service, comserve. Mm -hmm. So nursing, you must do the mm -hmm. comserve. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you do that. But once again, that experience of comserve, you gain skills that are still 
I'm still using today as a, as a nurse. I'm still registered as a nurse and sister on, sure. on, yeah. on the nursing council. Yeah. Um, so it's skills that you get, and it's all part of God's plan. Yeah. You know, it's all part of God's plan, and you don't need to know God's plan. God needs to know your plan. You don't need to know God's plan yeah. because God's plan will always be for the betterment of you yeah. yourself. You might not figure it out now. You might only figure it out later, but God's plan is always for you mm-hmm. and for your safety, for your betterment. Mm-hmm. So to anyone that's discerning, just pray about it, but listen. Listen <laughs> to God. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Then I, I, I think this will be my last one now. I want to also tap into your humanity, you know. Um, this life has certain virtues, or I want to say promises, still of them. You know, um, that one should live, and I'm sure, you know, for, formation is also taking place. I mean, trying to build them. So, how are you finding, you know, the process of conforming to those, you know, uh, promises? I'm speaking here about obedience, I'm speaking about a simple life, I'm speaking about uh, chastity, you know, or celibacy rather, yeah. Where are you? Are? I, 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 tell us, tell, tell us, tell us how, how, how was it? Did, did, you, did you have a romantic relationship before, before you, came you came here? How did you live here? What year did you I was sweating. Yes, but you don't come from heaven. I told you, you did a um, single job. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think, I think to, to answer that to Smilami as, as truthful as I can. <laughs> God does not call angels to this life. Sure. God does not call <laughs> angels don't just fall down from heaven and then come into the seminary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are human. We are men. Mm-hmm. Young men. Mm-hmm. We are human. Sexual beings. Sexual beings, emotional mm-hmm. beings, mm-hmm. physical beings, spiritual beings. Yes. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> I was in varsity at the age of 2019 when I did my first year 19 until 23 I did most of the things that you would expect yeah, someone in varsity to do mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to elaborate on what that is <laughs> I, I, I'm wearing a collar <laughs> I'm a changed man <laughs> God has changed me you are taking on me <laughs> you understand <laughs> so we did all those things, but it's through the grace of God that we are able to live in this life mm. and not be tempted. I'm not saying temptations are not there, but mm. to have the courage and the strength to overcome those temptations. You know, one thing Varsity taught me is, as I said, self-discipline and self-control. Yes. <laughs> if, 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 you, if you didn't have that in, in university, mm-hmm. I would be a junkie now. I would be a drug addict. Mm. I would be an alcoholic. Mm. I would be a womanizer. I would be, mm. you know, someone who doesn't obey. Mm. But it, it, it all boils down to the self-discipline that I cultivated in myself yes. and the self-control that I've had since varsity mm. that has grounded me in this form of life. You know, I, I once read a book, the, the, the most difficult promise, rather, because we don't take vows ourselves, mm-hmm. we take promises. The pro- most difficult promise in this life is that of obedience. Oh, yeah. oh. It is not poverty. <laughs> it is not celibacy. <laughs> but it is obedience. Mm. And obedience starts first with being obedient to God. Yeah. Before you are obedient to the man on the earth. Yeah. Mm. And it's difficult to be obedient to God. I'll give you an example. Look at Abraham. Abraham was told to leave his people, to leave his nation. And go to a nation that a land that he knows not, a foreign land. It takes complete trust in the one who has called you. Yeah. It takes complete trust in the promise of the one who has called you that you are able then to be obedient fully to him. Mm-hmm. You know, Father, 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 Connors was preaching on the annunciation. Oh, yes. That the annunciation is the yeah. utmost, is the highest form of obedience, of obedience yeah. that Mary could give. Mm. Obedience is, is the most difficult mm. of them all. But it takes you mastering being obedient to the master of this call. Mm. That then you are able then to live with that promise of obedience. Mm. Mm. 
you know, when you speak about obedience, you know, um, that, that, what, something that we overlook is the fact that, you know, as much as obedience has to be uh, given to God first, but you yourself must be obedient to yourself. yourself. Yes. Yeah. So if you can't be obedient yeah, yeah, to yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't be obedient to, to God. Yes. And if you can't be obedient to God, you can't be obedient to your bishop. Yeah. No, yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's a circle in a way, you know. Yeah. So, but it's a connectedness. But it, that's a good point. Man. But I thank you. Thank you. You know, there are quite difficult promises. I think it's quite challenging. Um, but you, you have to take it each step at a time or each day at a time. Mm -hmm. um, George is correct. Obedience is one of the most difficult ones. Not chastity, not poverty, it's obedience. As a nurse, I won't, I won't lie to you right now. As a nurse and sister, I was rebellious as a nurse and sister. I remember one day this matron walked in and all the nurses stood up for her. She walked in and I sat down, <laughs> finished my work, <laughs> and she looked at me and she's like, do you not know who I am? And I said, no, who are you? And she's like, I'm the weekend matron. So I'm like, you're the weekend matron. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And she just looked at me, she's like, what's your name? So I'm like, it's Mr. McCallum. When you report me, go to the matron. Go, when you report me to my manager, it's Mr. McCallum. Because yeah. she just walked in there and she didn't even introduce herself. Like, hi, I'm she Sister So-and-So. She didn't even <laughs> greet. Hi, I'm Sister So-and-So. Um, you know, she didn't do anything like that. She just walked in there and it demanded statistics. So it's very difficult, you know, I was very rebellious. Um, now, I think the rebelliousness is still there, mm. it is still there, um, but it's very timid, you know, if mm. if someone is to give me an instruction, like, go to this parish for this pastoral assignment, so be it. I, I won't challenge that. Mm. Um, I will go because, like George said, it's obedience to God. If you can be obedient towards God, if you can be obedient towards yourself, you can be obedient towards others to your superiors. Mm. Self-discipline, discipline, discipline, discipline. Mm. When it comes to poverty, you want the five hundred rand jersey at Woolies. You can't afford the five hundred rand. Save up you it. must <laughs> save for the five hundred rand <laughs> at Woolies. But you also need to be conscious of who you are working with. You need to be conscious of the people of God. You know, yeah. they are giving you a stipend. You can't you not go can't. and go stand there on a Sunday and say, "I want a second collection." Mm. for J purposes and then the next day father's wearing the latest shoes or whatever so even in the white period you have second collections it depends on for what <laughs> it depends on for what it depends oh, yeah. on what um, so yes it, ha it happens it happens but you need to be you need to be disciplined in that sense i mean you can't go and spend nine thousand rand on groceries oh, like you can't do that or come with fancy shoes you can't do that with chastity as well and that says a lot about you, especially when it comes to chastity. It's very difficult. I mean, I'll be very honest in that regard. It's very difficult. But when you go out, don't go and make a move on anything with a pulse now. Yeah. Don't go and do that. Because my goodness. Oh my goodness. Like, it's, it's challenging. Like, no, please don't do that. Like, I understand you're young. And this is the varsity. The experience of varsity comes into play. Sure. I didn't live at residence. I used mm. to park in front of the residence on a Friday night and I looked at the people that were part partying. The hospital is there. They are partying here. And you mm. just look at them like, yay. Yeah. You must go work a night shift. They are only starting their yeah. night shift. Yeah. Yeah. You might even see one of them at throw at 2 o'clock in the morning. God knows why. But you need <laughs> that discipline. You need to be disciplined in, in that sense. You cannot just run around. So be disciplined in those promises that you make. It's very, very important. No, thank you, brothers. And unfortunately, we are running out of time. But before we can end, I would like us to play a little bit of a game. I don't, I don't know if you are on TikTok or what. It's not a difficult game, you know. Just a game. As long as it's not a dance challenge. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> Trust me, it's not. So this game goes like this. Now you just state that. I am a Catholic, and then you state the fact. Ah, ah, ah. You know, okay. You know the game is, I'm a Catholic, of course. Of course, yeah, something. Yeah, so, 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 <laughs> so, 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 I think we'll start with Brother uh, Smelani. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, I'm Catholic. I'm in love with choral music. <laughs> okay. Music of all things. Um, I'm a Catholic. Of course, I say my rosary weekly. Okay. I'm Catholic, of course. Mary is my first lady. 
Wow. I'm a Catholic and of course I'm a SJB podcast host. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> and see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment to our videos, brothers. I saw that last time people didn't like our videos, they didn't comment, they were just watching. So please interact with us, ask questions, and put some in, you know, inputs in our videos. Thank you and have a blessing.